Hi, I'm Peter Kamström of Kamström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I will show you how to protect or potentially react to column value changes. And the reaction I want to do here is a rollback. That if somebody changes a column value in the department name field, then I'm going to roll back that. And I'm going to do that with a workflow. That means that it will work no matter where you're using this column. If you're using it on a mobile device, if you're using it in Microsoft Access, or however you're using the column value, it's the value, and we're reacting to the change in the value, not any change in the UI. There are UI ways of doing this also with CSS, with uh, the new framework, and um, of course with JavaScript and PowerShell settings also that you can do this. But I'm going to show you the workflow way of doing it, or so, rather the flow way of doing it. I have another demonstration on the workflow, but in this case I'm going to use a flow. So the first thing we're going to do is define what information we want to store about our departments. And we're going to do that by creating a department a content type. I'll do that in my site information and my site settings. I'm going to create a new content type. I'm going to call that Contoso Department. Department, there we go. And that's going to inherit from the list content type item. That's the most basic one that we have. And then I'm going to place that in a new group called Contoso. As you see, this very basic content type only has a title. Of course, I want to call that department name, but I'm not going to do that here. In the content type, I'm going to change that once we get to the list where we have the departments. So I'm going to add these new site columns, and call it employee, employees, the number of employees. And that's, of course, going to be a number. And I'm going to change the group to put it into a new group called Contoso. And I'm going to change the number of decimal places to be zero. Right. And then finally, we have the manager. So I'm going to add a new site column for manager. And that's going to be a person or group field or column. And I'm going to place that in the same Contoso group. And that's it. Now, to store the original value that we want to roll back to, I'm going to create another site column and call that original department name. And that's going to be a single line of text. I'm going to place it in the same group. And OK. Now it's optional, but I want to hide it eventually. But let's do that later. What I'm going to do now is add an app to contain these departments. It's going to be a custom list. And of course, I want to associate these two things now, the content type and the list. So I'm going to go into the department list settings. And to associate the content type, I need to go into advanced settings and allow management of content types. Press OK there. And then I'm going to add from an existing site content type the Contoso department content type. So now I want to remove the default item one, delete this content type, and then we're just going to do a little bit of cleanup under advanced settings. I don't want to allow the management of content type anymore. I also don't really like the attachments to be enabled, so I'll disable those. And then I'll go into versioning settings to set that the versioning settings should be on. They're not by default on in a list. And then we're going to do a final bit of cleanup here where we're going to go into the all items view and modify so that I can see the employees there and the manager name and also this original department name. Let's view that also. Of course, we're going to hide that later, but for now, let's see it there. So there we have all the information. So we've created all the information gathering needs except that we still have the title. So let's change that. I'm going to go into list settings and change the title to be department name instead. Looks a bit nicer, I think. Like that, department name. All right. 
And now let's automate this. Let's automate the rollback. So we've done the information gathering. Let's do the automation. All right. So I'm going to go into flow, Microsoft.com. And then, of course, I'm going to go into my flows and create a new flow from blank. And the trigger we want here is the new item is created or updated. So that's a SharePoint one, of course, when an item is created or modified. So let's do that one. And at a workflow, you have two different actions for item is created or modified. Those are two different things. Here's all one trigger. So you need to be careful about that, of course. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's important to know that all columns, including this original department, have a null value when you start with them. So that's how you test if it's been worked on or not. So I'm going to go into and enter the site address we're going to be working on. And of course, that's the HR site and the department's list. And then the first thing we're going to do is check now if this is the first time this is a creation. In that case, the original department name, that will be equal to null. Now, if I type in null here and look at it in advanced mode, you'll notice that it takes that as a string. And of course, that's not at all what we want. We don't want the string to be null. So I need to take away those hyphens there. So that's an important step there. So I should have used the function null instead. Now it contains a null. So that's correct. So if that's null, in that case, we're going to update and save the original value. So we're going to update the item. That's, of course, going to be a SharePoint action. Update item. There we go. And again, I'm going to use the same site departments list and the id of the current item and we're going to set the department name to the department name that needs to be done in a flow because of that column is of course mandatory so it needs to be set like that and then we save the department name in the original department name field there now so that was the new item the first time we're saving the original value if it's not, in that case, we're going to uh, do another check, another condition. We're going to check if the original value, original department name, is not equal to the current department name. That is, we have a change in that specific field. And here's where you want to put your React to particular field change actions. And in this case, my reaction in this example is going to be a rollback. So I'm just going to do an action to update the list item again. That's going to be a SharePoint trigger, and it's going to be an update list item. There we go. So we're going to use the same list, same site, same list, same ID on the item that we're updating. I'm going to set the department name back to the original original department name. And that's it. That's what we're doing. Let's save this now. And modify the name. Save or roll back original department name. It's a good name of my flow. So let's test this now. I'll perform the trigger action. And let's add a new item. North, 10 employees, I'll be the manager. All right. So let's save that. And now let's refresh this, and we should see the flow running. It's running, it's running. As you see, that value was null, so it did change the original value, so everything ran good. All right. So let's uh, change that. Go edit again, and we'll test it again. And this time, I'll perform the trigger action again. Let's refresh this and just see that north got stored in this original department value. So now, the trigger action that I'm going to perform now, that it's waiting for, is the modification. So I'm going to go into quick edit and modify the north here. I'm going to just change it to north1 and exit. And as you see, in a few seconds, we should 
get a rollback. It's still evaluating my condition here. Let's see now, let's refresh. And now you see it did roll back to north, which it should. All right, so now we have a working flow. So that's great. Let's just, yeah, everything is fine. I'll just change that. Yeah, everything is saved, all good. So let's go in and just hide this original department now. I'm gonna do that. First of all, I'm gonna do that in the view. Just edit the current view and just uncheck that box there. Okay. And then we're going to go into the content type, which is under site information, view all site settings, site content types, find the Contoso department, and original department name is going to be hidden. All right. So now let's test all this. I'm gonna go into the departments list. And as you see, it, it's hidden there now. It's hidden in the form. Good, so let's do south, 20 employees. Alex is the manager. Save that. As you see, south there. All right. Refreshing that a few times just to see that nothing bad happened with my item. Worked as it should. Good. And now let's go in to edit. I'm just going to change the department name there to South 2. Refresh. And there's my rollback. In the version history, I can, of course, see that everything has happened. So I can still see that that change was made. See, it was south too for a few seconds and then it rolled back. So the original department name is south, but that's not visible in the form. All right, so that concludes my demo on how to uh, store information about a list. You've probably seen other demos of that too, but to prevent or roll back any changes in a particular column and also react to, of course, you can do with this type of technique. Thank you for watching this demonstration.